the simplest and most cost-effective way to improve your guitar tone is by changing the speaker in your amp. The thing that actually turns electrical energy into acoustic energy. The thing that's hidden behind grill costs, so a lot of us don't really pay attention to them, and they're not shiny and they don't glow. So yeah, we get transfixed on all the unimportant shit, when really the big solution that we're all looking for looks like this. Now today's video is inspired by a user named Earth Shadow Time who asked the question, I know it's basic, but please do a video on how to change your speakers. Okay, now I got requested this by a lot of you guys and I'm like, really? You don't know how to change speakers? Okay, you know what? Fine, let's do some basic level stuff here. Maybe this can help somebody. Yeah, I don't understand why this is a big secret. You know, if you really want to improve your guitar sound, just change out the speaker, get something better than what you've already got. Cause chances are you're gonna really like the sound you get from upgrading from your original crappy ones if you've already got some nasty stuff. It's It could be a little more economical than, you know, running down some vintage esoteric matched and balanced vacuum tubes, which is basically going to sell you a bunch of snake oil and lead to an empty wall. The cool thing about buying speakers is, you know, they can be fairly economical. 100 bucks, 150 bucks, you know, depending on if you're buying new or used, unless you start, you know, looking for old vintage greenbacks, then shit can get a little bit expensive. But the great thing is a lot of the new modern speakers coming out right now sound absolutely fantastic. So I have been doing some experiments with vintage 30s from over the various years, and I got some 2003s here that came in a Mesa cab, and in slots three and four, that's the two on the bottom, I've got the 2006 models, which I shot out against the 2022 models in another video. Um, I'll have a link to that at the end of this video, and just cause kind of explains just how much better the new vintage 30s are sounding better than the mid 2000s. The 2003s, on the other hand, are a different story. They sound really damn good. And these, of course, were the ones that came out of the Ipswich factory in England because these originally came in a Mesa cabin. They are a little bit tweaked just slightly differently for the Mesa cabin. So let me go grab that Mesa cabin. I'll set this up and I'll show you guys how to change out a rear mounted speaker. It's very simple to do. The only tools we're going to need is a cordless drill with a number three bit. I like it about two inches long and a little bit of masking tape. Let me show you what that's all about in just a sec. Here we go. All right, so you know what I said about the number three? Disregard that, that's just a little bit big. Fortunately, I've got a couple of spare bits kicking around, so I found one for this. And this is what we wanna do first, is we just wanna undo the screws for this and kinda of let this hang, so when we pull the whole back panel off, we don't tear the wiring out or whatnot. It's also a good idea to have a cup uh, for all your screws and stuff to go in so nothing goes AWOL. Okay, you just need a tiny little bit of back pressure here. and a little bit of pressure forward. Make sure they don't do that. That's exactly what you don't want. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, I need something smaller here. Son of a bitch. Okay, last thing I wanna do is strip the screws. Don't do that. Hope this is gonna work. Yeah, okay, This uh, these screws are just about had it and I think this one's not gonna quite work. I should have actually laid this cab down. I just wanted to get the shot just to illustrate what's going on here. Tell you what, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna err on the side of caution, find a smaller Phillips head screwdriver and use that by hand, because last thing I want to do is strip this thing permanently and then that causes all kinds of problems. All right. <laughs> so I got lucky here. Um, I did find a really tiny flathead screwdriver that's actually going to do the trick. When the, when the original speakers go back in, I don't imagine I'm gonna screw with this cabinet very much anymore. I mean, like, it sounds really good. It's definitely got that classic Mesa sound to it. And that's something I want. And I'm gonna show you guys the difference between, you know, the O3s, uh, which, which originally came with us, and the O6s, were, which were the quote unquote Chinese made. Just gonna double check that, make sure those are the right ones I mic'd up. Yeah, generally we just wanna let this thing fly free because when we pull the back panel off, we can just, you know, kind of fit it through so we don't have to worry about breaking anything. Yep, bottom row are the angles, yes. And then, now how do I know this? Is because I marked the speakers with masking tape. I labeled them before I installed them so I'd know which ones were which. And the masking tape's gonna come in real handy when we start changing out speaker connections. We wanna keep positive on the positive and the negative on the negative. And also take pictures with our cell phone so if we get a little confused, we've got a reference point. And that will definitely save your ass. 
Okay, was digging the toolbox. I want to show you guys something here. These are my speed outs, and I use these uh, to drill out strip screws, that kind of thing. It's always a good idea to have a set of these on hand if you're dealing with musicians, because you just never know what kind of piece of shit they're going to bring into the studio that you're going to need to fix one way or another. This is the shit they don't tell you about in recording school. It's always a good idea to have a set of these on hand, because they will save your ass. All right, so the cabinet's laid flat. It's time to pull the back off. Now, if you look at these, there's no real way to tell the difference. They're all just straight up vintage 30s. However, the ones at the top are the originals that came in 2003, and the bottom are 2006 from my angle cap. And if you look at the selection date code, they've got a little number 50 on them, and that indicates made in China. Now, it's pretty damn important we get the wiring correct. As you can see, we've got positive here, negative here, and positive and negative. I've also got little flags put on the cabling here, so I remember what is where. Right here, I've got BR for obviously bottom right. Over here, BL for bottom left. But it's also really important you take a still image of how things are wired so you're not gonna be confused when you go to hook things back up because the last thing you wanna do is get have a short circuit or do something that will screw your amp up. The other thing I forgot about is these things actually use nuts on the rear mounting here, so I'm gonna have to go find a nut driver for this or some kind of attachment for my cordless drill and pull these things out. So did some digging here and turns out what we need is an 11 30 second bit to pull the nuts off these guys. Hooray, this is gonna be fun. We have to do it by hand because I don't have anything that'll fit my cordless drill. That would really save some time. Now for changing the speakers, I'd recommend doing them much like you do spark plugs and that is do them one at a time. Yes, I understand this will seem like a lot more work in the short term, but it will minimize your chances of making a mistake. And believe me, at $150 a pop, you don't wanna fuck these up. Now, just looking at the terminals again, black is negative and white is positive. So you just want to give these a gentle tug and pull them off. Make sure you don't... Are these fucking soldered? They're fucking soldered. Ah, oh, fuck me. So yeah, soldered connections. That's uh, going to add to this time quite a bit. Something I really didn't want to do. So I'm going to go grab my soldering kit and some paper just to protect the speaker cone so I don't drip solder onto them because that's the last thing I want to do. Uh, for what it's worth, we visited the Celestian factory this summer. I've got a video coming out about that in a few weeks. But uh, for their test rigs, they were only using alligator clips to hook up their speakers. So this thing about, you know, oh, well, soldering gives you more solid connection. I think it's kind of bullshit, to be honest with you. Um, spade connectors do the job just fine. Now, because I have to solder, I'm going to do all eight connections at the same time. With these two spade connectors, I do them, one, you know, one speaker and then the next. But just because we're soldering and because I don't have all freaking night to do this, yes, I am going to desolder everything for the two speakers I want to do, and then I'm going to hook them all back up again. Joy, like I said, this just added so much more work. I thought this was going to be a nice, easy video, but... Ah, oh, fuck, I really can't stand this sort of stuff. Now I have to add an extra part to this video about using spade connectors and how to do that. Actually, I'm gonna show you how to do that anyway and how to even make your connectors for them. It's really simple to do. You just gotta make sure you've got the right connectors. That's all. So the soldering iron's heated up. I just need to disconnect. And I've just put a little bit of paper towel under here so I don't get any solder dripping off onto the speaker cone because that's the last thing I want. Just heat and pull, it's pretty simple. Now I'm going to tape off those cables off to the side here just so I remember where the hell they're going, supposed to go. Now, I'm not a solder jockey here, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys are going, why do you need the paper towel there, Glenn? Because my soldering skills are just not that good. I actually had a little bit uh, come off onto my skin as I was removing that. So yeah, you got to be careful. And that's why I put that paper there just so nothing winds up on the cones. It's really critical that if you're not well experienced soldering that I would that you really do protect your speaker cones one way or another. All right, and uh, remove the nuts from the from the next speaker as well. Apparently you got to do this all at once. All right, so cabling's removed. The nuts are removed, and we want to be very careful when we're pulling these up that we don't accidentally drop them back on here the wrong way because those will go right through the speaker cones, and that's the last thing we want. Just grab firmly, they'll come right up. See? No problem. Now, the little 50 here, that indicates made in China. Just give it a good solid pull, you're fine. Okay, so I already went ahead and made some recordings with the 2006 Vintage 30s from the Engel Cab in uh, Space 3 and 4 there, and I even took some frequency response graphs. We're going to drop the originals back in now, and uh, then we're going to run the same tracks through and see what kind of a tonal difference we get. 
Again, we wanna be real careful we don't drop the speaker on these because that would be bad. All right, here's the mazes. Once again, these ones say Ipswich, England. So we're gonna drop these in right now. Two of these lined up, we should be good. One, two. And there we go. Perfect. All right, just give it a tug. Make sure you got a nice solid connection there. Please see my soldering guide if you don't know what, how to do it. That was not fun, but a necessary evil as it were. Looks like I got all the connectors back in place, exactly the same place they're supposed to be. Cool, we're wired up. Now we just gotta button the cabinet up and test it, make sure it works as it's supposed to. Now, just for the record, I hate soldering these things. I really do. I much prefer spade connectors. There's no difference in tone, and anybody tells you otherwise, it's just full of shit, to be honest with you. Once again, if Celestian, the, the brand that makes these, is actually using alligator clips for theirs to run their tests, I think we're going to be fine with spade connectors. The whole solder versus connector is just, I think it's a little bit overblown because we're working at massive voltages, not just, you know, like mic level stuff. So it doesn't have to be a, a super dead on connection because just so much current is going through them. Remember that cup full of screws and whatnot? Yeah, this is why we do this. So everything goes where it's supposed to go. Now, fortunately, most cabinet manufacturers are sane and use spade connectors like these right here on this Mototune British Vintage. Check this out here. We've got just straight up connections. There's no solder involved. All you have to do is get a proper little spade connector like so, and these drop right on and make a nice solid connection. No problem, no fuss, no worries, and it just makes life so much simpler so you don't have to dick around with soldering irons. Now, if you wanna wire up your cabinet yourself, it's a really simple operation. All you gotta do is get yourself some 14 gauge wire, some stake on pliers, and some spade connectors. The trick is just make sure you get your spade connectors somewhere from an electronic supply store and not an auto shop store because they don't sell the right ones. They're either gonna to be too big or too small. What you wanna get are these guys right here. You can find them on Amazon and these are for 14 to 16 gauge wire at 0 0.20 times 2.0. 5. These are the ones to get. These will fit selections, they'll fit your mojo tones, they'll fit eminence, you name it, they're going to work. They even work with my vintage 1977 blackbacks, which is hilarious because it's not even the standard spade connector that we get these days. Now all you got to do is just strip off a little bit of the insulator here on the cable and attach the spade connectors. It's really that simple. Let me show you what I mean. You just want to take off maybe an inch, maybe just slightly less. You don't need a whole lot of bare wire here. Just make sure your wire's twisted so you don't get any odd strands jumping out on you. And really just slide it over. It's really that simple. We use stake on pliers because they've actually got crimpers right here built into the end. Give it a tug, make sure it's attached right, and we're good to go. Now the second one, I might have just stripped off just a tiny bit too much. I think we're in good shape, but generally you don't want to take off that much insulation. And again, crimp 
Just real simple. Let's make sure it ain't going anywhere. Yep, we're good to go. And that's our end, and that's why we use spade connectors instead of solder joints, because it's just that much faster. Now on the back of the speaker, it's marked positive and negative, and we've got a little white positive line here on the speaker cable as well. It's just a matter of hooking it up like so. We're always trying to. There we go. And that's all there is to it. We got a nice solid connection with minimal dicking around. It's really that easy to use spade connectors. Now for all you guys who are wondering, hey Glenn, what about parallel versus serial? What about four ohms versus eight ohms versus 16? Okay, I wanna hear from you guys. I wanna hear if you guys got some use out of this video and you'd like to see a follow-up because if you do, I'd be more than happy to make that video where I show the various different wiring diagrams and show you some examples of how all that fits together and maybe can determine what style of wiring is right for you. The, this tutorial as it stands is just basically following whatever wiring the manufacturer had laid out and I wouldn't recommend changing that, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And the other thing I wanna do is I really do wanna show off eight versus 16 ohm speakers and see if there's any kind of a significant difference there at all. So if you'd like to see another video in this series, please leave a comment below. Let me know you're out there. I'll be more than happy to make it. Now, why go to all this trouble? Why bother to change speakers out that are the exact same model? Well, we get a pretty significant tone shift. Check out the 2006 Made in China versus the 2003 Made in England. Here we go. Yeah, that's a pretty major jump in tone. Unlike tubes or tone wood or even pickups, changing your speaker is going to have a very significant impact on your guitar sound and how well it works in a mix. Now, I even went as far as to make frequency response graphs of these speakers just so you get a really good idea of what's going on. Like, here's the 2006s in red. And the 2003s in green. And if you're looking at like what's going on here, check this out. When we lay the two frequency response graphs on top of each other, we can see the shift. It seems like the O3s have a lot more going on in the two to 3K range, whereas the 2006s have a lot more from 5.5K up to about 7K. And that gets a little bit nasty there. And I think that's where everybody's hearing that spike. And that's just why they aren't quite so nice. Can you correct that with EQ? Uh, maybe, but you'd be spending an awfully long Long time trying to do it, not to mention you'd have to be an absolute master at setting up EQs. So it's not for the faint hearted. Is it possible? I don't know. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but boy, you better have some spare time on your hands. That's for sure. Now, listening to these two speakers compared back to back, you can definitely hear how the Made in China Vintage 30s from 2006 got such a horrible reputation and why they're so frowned upon. I'm like, they're just not pleasant. Fortunately, Celestian has stepped up their quality control game over the last couple of years, and the newer models of the Vintage 30 that they're putting out sound absolutely spectacular. And I've got an impulse response for that in my video description below. It's absolutely free. Feel free to grab a copy, download it, and use it on 
on whatever projects you want. That's my gift to you guys for being fans of the show and watching the video and all that. And if you want to hear a direct comparison between the brand new Vintage 30s versus the 06s, you can check out this video right here and I've got a full rundown. It's definitely something you want to check out if you're a fan of the original Vintage 30s sound because Celestian has knocked this one out of the park. Check it out.